So uh, let's do this. Let's welcome in our MLB insider, John Morosi now. JP is ready to go. He's been itching to go for like an hour and a half as waiting for the truck race to end. And JP, it's great to see you. We know baseball's back. We also know that Clayton Kershaw is set to throw three innings in a simulated game tomorrow. So that, I would think, is good news. So what are the Dodgers' expectations for when they're going to get him back here? Well, good evening, Kevin. It looks like Kershaw could be back in the big leagues around the 1st of May if all goes well. But it's important to note here, this is the fourth straight year now that Kershaw has missed some time with an injury. And in each of the last three years, we saw diminished fastball velocity from him, according to Fangraphs.com. Now, earlier today, I asked Dave Roberts, the Dodgers manager, about if there was a little more concern at the outset of this season, the fact that this was not an injury that came because of a workload during the course of the year, but he just had trouble getting going at the start of spring training. And Dave said, yes, initially there was some concern, but that right now they believe Kershaw's in a very, very good place. Physically, mentally, he should be ready to go, they hope, here in the coming weeks. But one thing to point out, too, about the context here, they've got Julio Urias filling in right now for Kershaw, but the Dodgers really want to watch his innings, Kevin. Urias threw only 22 innings, minor leagues and major leagues, last year, and right now he's really holding that spot for Clayton Kershaw. Interesting. So he's got great stuff, but so, yeah, it was very limited what he could do. JP, we'll see you a little later in the show. Thanks, man, as always. Great Sounds stuff. Great. Not good news for the Brewers, because before the game, they received this news that their closer, Corey Knable, will indeed have to undergo Tommy John surgery. He will be out for the year. 27-year-old did say he's been dealing with discomfort in his elbow for the last five years, which is incredible, because he's been great. Um, look, he led the team in saves each of the last two years. It is a loss, even though the Brewers have depth out in that bullpen. And with that, why don't we welcome back our insider, J.P. Morosi. And J.P., Canabel out for the season. We now know that. And I'm curious, there's a, a, a guy by the name of um, Craig, Craig Kimbrell, who is still out <laughs> on the open market. The Brewers make a phone call here, at least, and inquire about this? Yes, uh, Kevin. According to my information, there are some ongoing conversations right now between the Brewers and Craig Kimbrell's agent, David Meter. The fit is obvious. It's there, and it makes so much sense because right now it's not just the Canable situation the Brewers are worried about. They're also without Jeremy Jeffress as well. So of the three key relievers they had late in the game last year that we saw in the NLCS, two of them are now hurt, and that leaves Hayter by himself. And we saw yesterday, an opening day, the Brewers had to go to Hader for a two-inning save in their very first game. That's a very, very bad sign. They're trying to trust at the very same time, Kevin. So many young starting pitchers tonight. Freddie Peralta, just three innings. There's a big gap in the middle of the game. If they want to find a way to get the best out of Josh Hader, they may have to find a way to get Craig Kimbrell. I'm curious, just your opinion here, JP, because what you're talking about now with the injuries already back there, that was the strength of their team, right? They did it all. They, they wanted, you know, four innings. They used the opener last year. They changed it up. Well, now a couple of those kids are in the rotation, right? And now with the lack of depth back there, I'm curious if you think that Craig Council will push the starters or at least try to. I know tonight it didn't work out, but do you think they'll change their philosophy early in the year here with Hayter the one real healthy guy? It's a great question, Kevin. And that's, that's a big concern right now for the Brewers. We even saw in, in the first game, Julius Chassin was out in the sixth inning. They had to really bridge the rest of the game with just two relievers, Junior Guerra and then to Hayter. So I think as much as they can, they'll try to extend those starters. But they're also now without Jimmy Nelson. He is not all the way back yet from a shoulder issue. That's why whether it's Kimbrell or maybe Dallas Keuchel, we'll maybe talk about him later on, they've got to find a way, I believe, to get a little bit more reliability, either lengthen out the starters, as you described, or find a way to layer in one more reliever. Because based on what you saw tonight, Goldsmith, those three homers against three different pitchers, the council had to find a lot of different answers there, and none of them really worked. So I think the Brewers right now, maybe not a full crisis right now, but certainly something to think about early in the season there in Milwaukee. Yeah, that, the stove is on. John, thanks. Uh, stay tuned. More from you a little bit later in the show. Back our insider, J.P. Morosi. And, J.P., we talked about Craig Kimbrell earlier. There's a Cy Young winner, an all-star, a gold glover who is still on the market. Dallas Keuchel. I I'm flabbergasted, to be honest. Can you give us any insight on when we will see him with a team at this point? Right now, Kevin, he is a team of one. His agent, Scott Boris, told me today that Dallas Keuchel is still having 95-pitch simulated games every fifth day. They're at the Boris Sport Training Institute. They're close to you in Newport Beach, California. They're close to the Fox Studios. So right now he's there pitching every fifth day. As Scott told me that he's talking with multiple teams right now. He is not telling me which teams, of course, at the moment. But I would pay close attention, Kevin, 
to the American League clubs that have had some injury issues in the rotation, specifically, of course, the Yankees. Uh, right now with, uh, with Severino on the DL and, and of course, CeCe Zabathia as well, I would pay close attention there. The White Sox will see if they play well enough to maybe merit the addition of a starting pitcher. And then Oakland, too, with their issues with mul multiple starters there on the DL. But I mentioned earlier as well, the Brewers. I've got to think at some point in time, whether it's Kimbrell or Keuchel, the Brewers have to find a better way, as you pointed out, to maybe bridge bridge that gap between the starters and relievers right now in Milwaukee. Can I just throw out a suggestion, JP, because he's training in Newport. Sure. Maybe he drives seven minutes and pitches for the Angels. I'm just going to throw it out there. It seems like a fit to me. Now that... KB, now that's a, that's a great. I, I I love the. Uh, this is a very. This has been a very uh, gr great conversation between you and Swish about what the Angels should do right here. <laughs> a lot of great ideas, a lot of great brainstorming there between the two of you guys. Uh, now maybe adjuncts to the front office there at Anaheim. I love it, Swish, right there, baby. You know I so uh, I would say this. I will I will make that suggestion to our friends there in Anaheim, and I will let you know how far that goes up the flagpole. I was told right now no conversations, but I agree geographically, thematically, roster wise. Great suggestion. You know what I love about John? Not only is he great at his job, but he could throw the hate all the way from his home. Did you see him win? It's so, it's so beautiful. JP, you're the best. We'll see you soon, buddy. <laughs> My pleasure, guys. You, Thanks so much.